Okay, so I get a lot of emails from people saying, hey Nick, I'm about to buy a Porsche or some other make or model of car. What sort of discount should I be aiming for? What discount did you aim for, Nick? And it's a very open-ended question, you know. Uh, there's no one answer. Uh, there's so many variables when buying a car that uh, you have to take a lot of things into account and each individual purchase has its own level of discount that is possible. So I wanted to take you guys through the process that I have when I buy a car and how I try and maximize the discount that I get. So, uh, and I really, this probably applies to any type of car, you know, I, this video is about me purchasing a Porsche 911, which is a kind of an expensive car, but uh, really it's important to get a discount no matter what level car you're buying. But if it's a very expensive car, like if it's a car over $100,000 like my car, uh, then a good discount does make a big difference. And for example, if you're buying a $140,000 car and you're getting a 7, 8, 9% discount, that's more than $10,000 you're getting back. $10,000 is a lot of lap dances and steak burritos. Um, so it's well worthwhile uh, getting as big a discount as you can. But it's not a straightforward process. It does take a little bit of work. Also, um, despite the fact that I happen to be wearing a suit today, uh, I am just a YouTube guy. I am not a financial manager. I don't have any expertise in this. I'm just giving you my personal opinion. There's probably better ways of doing this. So you should always balance my advice uh, with your own circumstances, uh, your own judgment, and of course your own common sense. Um, everybody has, everybody does things differently, so I'm sure there's a lot of people that are going to watch this video and go, oh Nick, you're doing it wrong. And I welcome that, you know, anybody that wants to write in the, uh, in the comments below, hey, you know, Nick said this, but I also tried that, you know, all advice is welcome. All we're here to do is work as a community to try and get the best deals we can with our cars. So, on with uh, the process that I take in order to get the very best deal when I'm purchasing a car. So, as a general rule, when I'm purchasing a car, I try and spend as little time with the dealership and the car salesman as I possibly can. In fact, if I can walk in and be ready to purchase the car and not do any test drives, not ask any questions, not have any relationship with them at all, but be have the sheet in my hand ready to go, that is the ideal circumstance for me. Uh, and that might sound a little bit off, you know, you think, well, that's what the car dealer is there for, to help you understand what you're gonna buy. But the reality is, and particularly when it's a Porsche you're buying, um, you're gonna find that you probably know more about the car you're purchasing than the salesman. You know, the salesman is supposed to be there to help you purchase, but really the salesman is there to get as much money out of you as you can. But that's not to say you should be rude or unprofessional with them. You know, these are people as well and they're just doing their jobs. Um, and they're there to help you through the process, but you know, they're there to, um, they're there to make as much money from you as they possibly can. They're not there to be your friend. They're there to look after the interests of the dealership, not you. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind. So there are really two steps in purchasing a car the sales process and the after sales process. Let's take the sales process first. And I break it down into three steps, the sales process. Uh, researching what I want and how much I'm gonna pay for it. Uh, preparing um, the documents and preparing for the, for the execution, which is the third part. So I research, I prepare, I execute. Uh, and the research part is, can be kind of fun. You know, the research part is figuring out what make and model, what options, you know, and a lot of people go to the car dealership for help with that. That is a mistake in my mind. Um, there's a lot you can do before you even go to the car dealership. There's a lot of resources available these days and you'll be surprised. The people that already own the car that you're looking to buy are often very helpful in giving advice on what worked for them and what didn't work for them. You know, a car dealer is going to always kind of push you towards getting more options and spending more money with them. When if you go and talk to people that already own these cars, you can often find out that, ah, maybe I don't need to spend that much on this or that option and I can do without that. And you can get a much more unbiased opinion from existing owners about what you're going to buy. So the first step is figuring out exactly how you can configure your vehicle uh, and that's through watching YouTube videos or talking to people that already got these cars or your own personal experience. Once you've got that all sorted out then you want to start looking at uh, how much discount people are getting from the make and model of car that you are buying. That is, you know, uh, there's no one set discount for every make and model 
if we look within the Porsche range, for example, I personally was looking at two models. I was looking at a Carrera 4S and a Carrera 2S. And so when I did my research on how much discount people were getting on those two models at the moment, I found that the Carrera 2S was averaging between 6 to 8% discount, uh, whereas the Carrera 4S was averaging between 4 to 6% discount. Why is there a difference? Well, uh, at the moment there is more demand for the Carrera 4S and so there's less allocation and so the dealers are offering less discounts on those. Um, the, other, the other factor would be you know, if it's a rarer car or it's a car that uh, there's a limited production on or it's just a car for whatever reason there's just no allocations, there's no way the dealers can get more, then you're going to get less discount or no discount at all. So you make a model uh, factors greatly into how much discount you're going to get. So you do your research by looking online. You can look on the forums. In my case, I'm looking uh, at a Porsche, so I'm looking at the uh, Renz list or the Six Speed Online forums. And there's always a discussion going on. How much are people paying for these models at the moment? And you can get a fair idea. And it's a it's it's a bell curve, you know. Uh, people are all over the place. Some were getting 4%, some were getting 6%, some were getting 8%. And what you want to do is read through the whole discussion and, and get an idea as to where that midpoint is, where the, the bulk of the bell curve is, because that's your starting point. And you want to um, discount any outliers, you know, people that are saying, there's absolutely no discount on these cars, or people that are saying, hey, I got 20%. <laughs> something's up there, something's up there. You want to look, you know, there's always that, that midpoint, and that's your starting point. Um, other areas that you can look are online. There's always websites that show true price that people are paying for these cars. So have a good look at that and you'll see that that probably lines up with what the forums are saying. And in my case, I'm lucky, and you guys might be as well, that I actually have some friends that work in Porsche dealerships. So I ran it past them as well. Hey, what type of price, do you, what sort of discount do you think you'd get uh, from a configuration like mine? And they gave me feedback as well. And as it turns out, those three areas all gave me approximately the same um, levels of discount for the cars that I was looking at. So now that you've got that bell curve or the average discount that people are getting, you want to try and ease yourself up into that higher percentage. If everyone else is getting 5%, then you want to try and get 6 or 7%. And how do you do that? Well, there's a number of factors. The first one being is that you want to be an easy customer for the dealership. That is, you want to be ready. You know, you want to be ready to do the deal you want to be laying it out for them exactly what you're buying and how much you're paying for them. Uh, an easy customer is a customer that they're willing to give a little bit more discount to because they haven't wasted a lot of time on and you know it's just throughput for them. Uh, the second is, is some consideration as to what you're buying. Um, Higher discounts may be available to you if you're buying certain types of vehicles and that is if you're buying a vehicle that's off the lot you might want to consider one or two percent higher because cars that are on the lot you know, they're already sitting there, they're a simple sale, you know, um, they're paying insurance on those cars while they're sitting on the lot, they want to get rid of them. So if you're buying a car off the lot, definitely go for one or two percent higher. You know, they often get higher percentage of discount from Porsche Cars North America for those cars as well, because they're often just sent to the dealers. The dealers don't request them, they're just stock cars. So lot cars definitely go for one or two percentage more. Um, another car that you should try and go for one or two percentage or even more is cars that have a lot of options. If you're paying $100,000 for the base of the car and another $50,000 for options, you definitely need to go for a higher discount. Uh, the reason being is, you know, the, the dealer makes X amount on the, the base car, but they make a lot more on the options. Hence why they're always pushing more options on you. That is the cream of their sale. So yeah, if, you, uh, if, you're, if you're planting a lot of options on your custom build, definitely go for a higher discount because uh, they're making a lot more money from you. So now that you've decided on the, the upper level of the discount that you're going to go for, uh, you need to prepare for the interaction with the dealership. Um, and this is pretty straightforward really. What, what I tend to do is I tend to put it all down in a spreadsheet. Uh, and the spreadsheet doesn't have to be that complicated. Here's the spreadsheet that I did for my career of 4S. Uh, what I've done is I've listed every single thing that I'm buying with this car and I've listed it in the order that it appears on the configurator once you go to uh, finish my build. You can go in there and you can see the code, you can see the price and you list every item one by one and the reason why you have to get it in the right order is because when you present this to the dealer 
if he decides that yes let's go ahead and put this in the configurator and, and build your car and get you ready for the sale uh, you want this to take as short a time as possible uh, any sort of delay or you know taking time in a dealership is, is, is a tactic that the dealers will use against you you know uh, your time is precious and the longer you're sitting there looking at your watch the more desperate you become just to get it over and done with so the idea is to get in there and be as organized as possible so that they're not wasting your time you know you know exactly what you're going to pay and you know the order in which everything that you're buying uh, is going to go into the configurator uh, so it should be a very straightforward process that's certainly how it works for me and you know, i go in there and you can almost see the disappointment on their faces when it's clear <laughs> that i know exactly what i'm buying and how much i'm paying for it so yeah, you put everything uh, into your spreadsheet uh, the price you're paying and even the code if you can in the order that's meant to go then you list all the other add-on um, non-variable things like the destination charge and then you get a total and that total is important um, because once he puts it, all those things into configuration that total needs to add up with his his total and if it doesn't you know he's missed something and you can quickly see ah oh, you know it's out $375 so he's obviously forgotten you know whatever item on here is $375 so you can clear that up then you can show you then you can put your discount uh, now this is where this is where it hits the dealer a little bit they can see that you've already decided on the discount you're getting uh, and they're going to put up a um, they're going to put up a little fight at this this point and go mm, I'm not sure we can get you that discount or you know we're just not discounting at all at the moment it's always the opening gambit you know and that was certainly the case when I went in with my car is you know they said you know there's just no way we can get you that discount Nick it's just it's just miles off we just don't make that much money on these cars um, <laughs> and of course I did get the discount in the end um, so it's uh, it, it's you know it's a little game um, but don't back down you've got it there on paper you're not discussing it it's there in black and white um, so it's unchangeable you know you're giving them a piece of paper that shows you it shows them exactly what you're going to pay and so it's up to them to come up to your discount instead of you to go down to what they are wanting you to pay. So you put your discount in and that shows you how much you're going to be saving. Put your dealer fees in and then uh, taxes and any other bits and pieces that are applicable to your uh, state or country. And then you know exactly where you stand. Um, and you thank them and you know if you're lucky they'll go yes we'll take this right now and you can put a deposit down fantastic and, and then you move on to stage two if not you know you've handed them the sheet of paper they know exactly what you want and they know exactly how much you're willing to pay for it and you can walk out of the dealership at that point and wait for that call and hey hopefully you'll get that call but what you'll almost certainly get is a call with the uh, with a lower percentage and you just need to hang out hold out because they know what is going to get them the deal and they want that deal so sooner or later they'll come up to your percentage and if not you hand that piece of paper into a couple of other dealers and sooner or later you'll get the deal uh, and you don't even have to go into a dealer to do this you know you can fax or email this deal and when i say email don't email the spreadsheet email a pdf that can't be changed email a pdf to the dealer saying hey i'm in the market for a carrera 4s I live locally I don't have time to come to the dealership at the moment you know are you able to do this deal and get the ball rolling that way um, the more you spread it around the better but you know your local dealer there's no reason why they can't give you the discount that you're looking for if you're straight up with them and you haven't wasted their time so on to the second stage which is when you pick up the car so you've already agreed to a price on the car agreed to a discount great you've done a good job but the second stage is another opportunity uh, for the dealer to make money off you. And often they can make more money off the second stage than off the first stage. So they may have thought, ah, oh, you know, we're going to give Nick Murray a great discount on the purchase price, but we're going to make up for it in the second stage. Uh, and the second stage is a tricky one um, because there's a lot of variables in the second stage where things can go off the rails for you. So you need to be prepared for this as well. And just like the first stage, you want to do some research preparation and execution uh, so when you walk in to pick up your car you're ready for all the little things that they're going to throw at you um, and the first one being is uh, how are you going to pay for the car um, obviously you can pay cash uh, you can make payments or you can lease the car there's lots of options there uh, and unfortunately uh, unless you're paying cash 
making payments or leasing the car adds a level of complication um, that, that is where they can uh, sneak in extra fees and costs. Uh, and the way to uh, avoid that is to make sure that you're prepared and you know what you think you should be paying for your lease or your payment options. And you can request from the dealer approximately what you think your interest rate's gonna be and a copy of the lease document before the car even comes in so that you can go through it yourself. And lease agreements are kind of complex, but they're not impossible to understand, you know. Uh, so you wanna fill it in yourself and get a fair idea so that when you are with the dealer, when you're with the finance manager at the dealer, uh, and he's filling it in, you can compare it to what you thought it was gonna be and you can call them on anything uh, that you think that they're overcharging you on. Uh, the second thing of course is are you trading a car, uh, there are other complications like whenever you, if you can avoid trading a car at any cost it's always a good thing because where they may lose money from giving you a decent discount they can gain from giving you a poor trade in value. So you need to have negotiated that at the point of the uh, purchase if necessary or sell the car privately or some other way. Uh, the only other time when a trading a car can actually be to your benefit is in some states or countries where there's a tax benefit to trading a car. Uh, often you can get the taxes back off the trade-in, so that's something to consider as well, but I should do a separate video on the whole financing of a car at some stage. Uh, but yeah, where uh, the final hurdle is, is of course the options. And this is a high pressure moment for you. The car is sitting there, <laughs> you, you've got your check ready or your payments ready, you're ready to go, and it's at that moment they hit you with, you know, you should get wheel and tire insurance, you should get a special coating, you should get an extended warranty. Suddenly there's a million very attractive but very expensive options that they present you just before you're signing that really long sales document. Uh, and it's a great trick by the dealers, you know, at the time you think, oh my goodness, uh, sh should, I, should, I, should I get that? That does sound like a good idea. Um, and some of them are, you know, some of them are worthwhile. You know, I personally will be getting coating on my car, but I want to know that I'm getting a good deal. You can buy it off the dealer, but you have to know that you're getting a good deal for the dealer. So before you even go in, you want to request from the dealer, hey, what options are you going to offer me when I get pick up this car? Uh, and so you can go and research whether it's cheaper for you to get them elsewhere. Even tire and wheel, tire and wheel insurance is cheaper, often, third party than from the dealer. And certainly for me, you know, I'd like to get my car covered, so I'm going to be finding out how much it's going to cost for a third party to do it afterwards, as opposed to the dealer doing it. So all of those things need to be researched beforehand, and you need to have a little note, a little spreadsheet or a little note with you, knowing exactly what you want to pay for that stuff, uh, because that's all up for negotiation at that time as well. You know, he's going to offer you, hey, I want, you know, the, the finance manager is making money from that stuff. Your salesman has already done his job, now the finance manager wants to make money off you. Uh, so you can negotiate with him, hey, I'd like the wheel and tire package, but I'm only paying $1,200, not the $2,000 that you guys are offering for me. But you can only do that if you know you can get it for $1,200 elsewhere. Uh, so that's the second stage, and that's just as important as getting the discount at the beginning. So that's it really. The underlying principles are pretty simple. Uh, the important parts are that you need to know what you're trying to buy, how much you're gonna pay for it, and then presenting it in such a way to the dealer that there's no need for a discussion. Um, and, and that can be tricky to do. Uh, it can be tricky to do because you know the dealer's there to help you, help figure out what you need in the car, but you can get a lot of that information from being away from the dealer, from other owners, from being online, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So the more research you can do, the more knowledge you have, the more power you have in this deal. It works very, very well for me. I'm sure it's going to work for you. I hope this video has been of some help to you guys. Uh, if you've got any questions, be sure to put them in the, uh, in the comments below or email me directly. My email's in the comments as well. And I wish you all the best with your car purchasing. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye then.